yeah, so I'm still trying to recover from the year that we were um, left outside in a tent to die, basically. I was pregnant that entire time. That we were, I was physically attacked at 14 weeks uh, pregnant. I had to literally curl my body in a ball over my uterus to protect my unborn child from being harmed. Um, a grown man was stomping on my head at 3.30 in the morning while I was asleep in a tent. Um, there was no provocation. There was no argument. I, it was a stranger. Um, and there were several other things. Um, I'm writing about all of the things I've experienced in my novel. Um, but none of these things are acceptable ways to treat, you know, a human being, even an animal, period. There's, there is no more to say about it. So I'm still catching up on sleep besides the fact that I just gave birth. Um, and I, I was very active my entire pregnancy up till 28 weeks when I began having contractions. So my professional background is in healthcare. Um, I also started my own company, um, which is a production company. I work it alone. Um, I have never once hired another person um, to model or curate or direct. Xavier works with me. And I had a previous assistant who worked on a commission basis in 2017, 2018. Um, but if you hear of anyone writing for the show or for the production, um, it's not to do with me. My company is called GoPro Solo. Um, and the account here on Instagram is called a GoPro Solo Production. And that's where I create statement modeling uh, campaigns about different subjects that I think are worthwhile to discuss further. Um, and humane treatment uh, of each other, compassionate treatment of each other, um, and just different things to better describe the world that I think we all want to live in. Ooh. And here is my resume. So if you have any questions, please let me know. But I'm going to post my resume on the next post. Um, I have a tremendous reputation in the healthcare community. Uh, everyone I've ever worked with has been, you know, very happy with my work ethic. Um, and I picked up a lot of other skills. I have a lot of college, pardon me. I have a lot of college um, and I'm just exposing my evolution as a professional so that I can attract like-minded individuals who have common, um, you know, goals, common values, common ethics, and want to take their business um, or creative endeavor in the same direction of where I'm going. So here's my resume on the next. So in addition to all of that that I've just posted about, I also have a ton of other experience with regards to parenting. I've been a parent for 17 years, uh, 14 of those years, all three of my children lived with me as a single mother. Um, and I was effectively able to manage a career, earn income, be a good mother to three children, you know, buy groceries, clean our house. Um, and I'm coming from a place of complete poverty. So this is unique for a lot of people. Anyone with money can hire someone to juggle those, um, you know, things without having a, a good amount of money. Um, you have to be very creative. So I was able to do so um, in a very successful way that I'm very proud of. I have three beautiful children um, and I cannot wait to see, you know, what they have in store for life. Um, and what life has in store for them. Uh, the areas that I'm looking for employment in are definitely first and foremost, remote medical billing and coding, um, any sort of remote customer service. I wanna be home with my newborn baby. He's five weeks old only. Um, so I wanna be home with him. And um, I have a 10 year old little girl, you know, I, I really don't know what the games are behind all of the uh, events that have gone on for the last four years since 2020. Um, but I do believe in God and I do believe that God is going to come through and, you know, shine light on the truth. Um, in the words of Kevin Gates, I am who I am and who I'm not, I'll never be.
Regarding any of my belief systems, I like to put it out there, you know, and put it in my bio so that no one can attack me. There has been a lot of really nefarious crap going on in the world of social media influencers and um, celebrity, if you take it a step above that. Um, and it's really nefarious and nasty. And I'm really glad that you guys have stuck around to hear what I'm talking about and, and you know, to raise awareness for this. Um, but they basically find a way that you differ in opinion from someone else and make it their job to attack you over it. Um, and it can be an online attack. It can be an in-person attack. It can be a verbal attack. It can be a physical assault. Um, it is truly disgusting. And that's what encouraged me to build the What Is Your Impact campaign, which is a campaign that's built around compassion and integrity. So if we're asking um, about the basic functions of life, of political life, of daily life, and of morals, values, and ethics, I think of sexuality, um, racism, humanity, um, and social, socioeconomic justice, okay? And I'm going to tell you my opinions on all four of them, whether you want them or not. If you don't want them, just stop scrolling, stop clicking, stop watching. So first and foremost, um, I value traditional gender roles for me and my life. Um, what does that mean? It means I want to be with a man and I want him to allow me to be a woman. I want to look to him when I feel scared. I want to feel comforted by him. I want him to be the, you know, um, top of our family and me to be right next to him and for us to assume traditional gender roles. Now, obviously this is not 1920, um, you know, where women cannot vote, and I'm not even addressing that because it's not the world we live in. I'm not a hardcore feminist, um, but I do believe that traditionally women are different than men biologically, intellectually, we have the similar capacities, but um, we're made differently. Men traditionally have muscles that are larger than women for a reason. So on the next subject, I don't believe in like trans, trans as being another gender. Um, I just don't believe in it. I believe in respecting their wishes if they want to be called another gender. But at the end of the day, you don't have a uterus and you're not a woman. You don't have a penis and you're not a man. So if you ask me nicely to refer to you as whatever you want to be referred to, I will. Because why wouldn't I be respectful of another human being? But I'm not delusional and I understand that what makes a man a man and a woman a woman, a male a male and a female a female are reproductive sex organs. So I'm fully aware of that um, and I won't pretend like I'm not but I will be respectful of whatever, you know, your wishes are, as I'd like you to call me a woman because I'm a woman and a mom, you know? Okay, so take three. <laughs> um, not because I did not eloquently state my point, but because they continue to freeze it. So I was discussing another point. This goes into my values of uh, social justice and um, just issues that I don't think should be gaslit for our children and each other and the internet. And uh, Turning Point USA, uh, specifically, I think it was Charlie who made this point that the majority of murders are committed by black people, statistically. And someone said, well, that's because the majority of impoverished neighborhoods and areas are, you know, black people. And what I say is, it's more than that. It's also not only are they poverty areas, but they're also areas that don't receive a police response. So when you have violent crimes that Yes, they are, you know, the majority taking place in poverty stricken areas. Uh, and that is because of slavery, period. And then you also have to ask yourself if you were sexually assaulted or brutally attacked and you called law enforcement to come help you and they didn't show up or they showed up several hours later. And we're not blaming. We're not saying law enforcement is the devil. No, we're not saying that at all. What we're saying is of God we understand of god means of understanding of god means of knowing if we are of god and we are claiming to be godly 
children, followers, and believers of God, we have to also, you know, put that into action. And in doing so, you have to be able to look through the perspective of other people, even if it's not your life. We don't all have to take on the form of others to be able to understand. It just takes a a tiny bit of effort. If you're in a neighborhood and you get raped and you call the police and they don't show up and you have a gun, are you shooting? Religiously, I don't really have a one-size-fits-all answer for that. I go to different churches. I was baptized and raised Lutheran. I don't like the lighting over there. Uh, I look so red. I was baptized and raised Lutheran. I go to um, St. James Church, with which is, I believe, Episcopalian. I go to Fourth Presbyterian sometimes. Um, I go to Catholic Church sometimes. And I also believe in a lot of the teachings um, in the Quran. So... I don't have one, um, you know, religious answer or viewpoint for you. I believe in God and I believe in reeling in the behaviors of ourselves and society to what they were originally intended when the Bible was written, you know, um, and sticking as close to that as far as values, morals and ethics go as we can. Regarding immigration and immigration reform and refugees and federal funding for refugees um my only opinion is if we can build a wall why can't we add three other walls and a roof and offer housing at the border um whatever political constituency and you know paperwork needs to be done Uh, Why can't it be done while also, you know, providing for some sort of safe space right there at the point of entry? Uh, People don't flee their country and sleep in terminals of airports because they feel safe and secure, right? So there's a huge crisis going on if there are people literally living in those capacities that needs to be addressed. Um, And that has nothing to do with what country of origin you or your family come from. On back to relationships, I value monogamy and I would never be in a non-monogamous relationship ever. Um, I mean, unless I didn't know that the person was not being monogamous. And that's basically just because I don't like to play games with one person, let alone multiple. And there is no such thing as a perfect relationship. Every relationship is going to have drama and stress. And it's just a matter of, you know, putting forth effort with the person who you partner with to work through those dramas and stressors. Um, But I have four children who come with their own drama and stress, and I have drama and stress. So why would I want to say, oh, yeah, I'll be in a relationship with two more people who have drama and stress or three more people? Absolutely not. One person and their drama and stress is all I have room for. For parenting style, I believe in being honest with my kids and delivering them truth that's catered to their age and level of understanding. Um, And specifically what that means is I wouldn't tell my 10-year-old the exact same version that I would tell my 17-year-old or even my 16-year-old. And you know your children best. You know what they understand and what they don't understand. Um, You know, and that in itself makes all the difference in how you deliver information to them Um, and the effect on their happiness. And when I discuss happiness, I'm not talking about fun. I'm talking about overall, over a course of years, is the child happy? And when you think about how to deliver information to your child, you have to weigh in uh, the effect that that information will have on their overall happiness and ability to regulate. So... um, yeah, you know, just play it by ear and you know your child best. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good. Important and like undervalued value, I think, that's going on in America today is, and this is outlined in my What's Your Impact campaign, bullying and kindness. Um, and this applies to all ages from kindergarten, toddlers, all the way to adults. If we don't find a way to get adults on board with stopping in their tracks and asking themselves what is my impact if i engage in this behavior what are the residual effects on the people around me how can we expect their children to do so or their children's children to do so 
um, just not being a jerk. If you're watching TV, and this can apply to in-person social media or whatever, if you're watching TV and you're, you're going through channels, you're not going to stop and watch something you don't like, right? So why would you stop on someone's social media and talk down to them or degrade them? That's terrible. You know, let's get... And families should always stay together. Um, if you have someone who you're, you know, dealing with, who you don't think is capable of being a parent, you should be using the money to rehabilitate that person and that family, not to pay a stranger in the foster care system to temporarily take care of the child. Rehabilitate families together. Rehabilitate them together. It's not a matter of money. It's a matter of morality. I really don't have anything to say about same-sex marriage. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I think where we're at right now is where we should be. Um, it is what it is. People love who they love, uh, you know, and that's it. However, there are a lot of subliminal issues that go along with um, same-sex marriages in the foster care system. And this is why I'm saying families need to stay together. There have been numerous very corrupt, coercive um, manipulations that have taken place that have literally stolen babies and children um, for the purpose of placing them for profit. Placing a child for profit is the most disgusting and destructive thing that someone could do. So if, if that were going to be the case of um, a same-sex couple raising a child, it should only be in a pre- determined surrogacy um and that is you know completely outside of the system it's not systemic it's not of the system it's not criminally you know monitored it's not um dcfs monitored it has absolutely nothing to do with those agencies and it would be like a formal contract with a lawyer um, and sometimes the exchange of money, that would be the only, you know, in my opinion, ethical way. Um, because the incentive that I personally have witnessed um, to cause damage to someone in an effort to have access to their child um, is, very, is very relevant to uh, the, the subject matter as it's discussed. But at the end of the day, it's always been my opinion that the queer community is just like any one of the rest of us. There are successful people who are lesbians or who are gay. Um, there are people who are kind, compassionate, caring, and abide by you know laws, morals, and ethics of every sexual orientation. And that's really, I feel, we've come so far from it that it's not even an issue. It's like interracial dating. Does anyone even care anymore? Like, is that still a thing? Like, is that something that people... I don't know, maybe I'm privileged to live in an environment where I have been around gay people and interracial couples and all these sorts of controversial things that they don't even seem controversial to me. Uh, you know, the majority of my life, I've been around these sorts of things. Um, so what rock is there? What little town is there that still doesn't accept those things? I, I really don't know, but um, I, I don't even think it's a thing anymore, is it? Now... Another one that I recently formed was with regards to homelessness and poverty. There should not be any of this, period. We are in 2024 in an evolved American society. There is no reason for this. I mean, we have so much space in this, in this world that we've built, in this country that we've built, in this city of Chicago that we've built. To see even one person living outside other than because they choose to live outside is unacceptable, in my opinion. Every single person should have access to a living space, whether they can afford to pay for one or not. The same with food, um, and that doesn't have to come at the expense of middle income taxpayers' dollars. Um, you know, there is enough to go around. We live in a world of abundance, not in a world of lack. Abundance. I need a tan. I really feel like that Muse filter is just giving glow. And my regular face is giving, let's go to Florida. Or Hamas, LA. Any warm weather climate for like a week or two. LA tan, Palm Beach tan.
Okay, so I've had several interviews today and last week, but all of the opportunities are for sales with an initial investment required. So we'll see what I choose. Um, I really, really like two or three of the opportunities so far. I feel like I could realistically see myself being successful in those roles. Um, but one of them is for alcohol, um, which we are not allowed to have here. And I would need to store it um, and then like do events and tastings and things, samplings and things. And the other one is for um, travel. So they both require um, an initial investment. And like I said, I, I know that I could be successful in them. It's just going to take some creative problem solving.